Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Olight S10R, S15R, and S20R. Alright, here we have the Olight S10R, S15R, S20R. Fantastic, fantastic lights that I'm really excited about for a few reasons. One, being a retailer, I'm going to sell a lot of these and that excites me. But uh, also, these are great little lights. So they took some of our most popular lights of all time, the S10, the S15, and S20, and uh, made some really nice improvements to them. And those originals are going to stay around because they're not rechargeable. These are rechargeable, and that's the big difference between the two. So they basically add a charging feature to these along with some other nice improvements. So you can see there on the tail cap, they actually added a tail cap on here that allows it to be recharged along with changing the internals and the switch and some other parts. So I have the S15R and S20R already out of the packaging, left the S10R in the packaging so you can get an idea what the packaging looks like and we'll show you everything that they come with since they do all come with the same things. Some good information on here. So the max output on the S10R is gonna be 400 lumens. It goes all the way down to 0.5 lumens. The S15R is going to be uh, 0.5 lumens up to 280 lumens. And then the S20R is one lumen up to 550 lumens. And uh, the run times, the throw, and all that kind of stuff, if you want the full specs, you can get it all on our site, goinggear.com. So we're going to go and set the S20R and the S15R to the side for just a second. We're going to open up the packaging of the S10R just so we can show you what comes in them or co what comes with them and uh, how they all work and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to go and pull it out. We'll set that to the side. You got some paperwork here. So you've got the user manual, information about their other products. Both of those are definitely worth a read, especially the user manual. Nice lanyard. Olight actually makes really nice lanyards. We actually sell these separately because people requested them so much. Some spare O-rings in case you happen to need those. And down here in the bottom is a very nice little charging base. So instead of integrating the uh, charging unit into the flashlight itself, that adds bulk and weight. Uh, they actually made it where you can have the tail cap and you stick that on the charging unit and they kept them nice and small. So if we compare this to the original S10, you can see the size is pretty much the same. It's only a little bit longer just to incorporate some of the charging stuff into it, but uh, it's not significantly larger like it would have been if they had all the charging components in the body. So I like that they did that. They kept them nice and small, especially when you compare them to the originals. So here is the charging base. All of the models have the same charging base. They all use the same one, and uh, they kept the magnet in the tail of the the uh, in the tail of the light. So it actually magnetically just clicks right on there. And of course, you can use this as a magnet on other things. We actually like to use them in our warehouse uh, just to keep them on the metal shelves. You know, light things up, or you can use them on the underside of a car, anywhere that a magnet will stick, pretty much. And they are nice, strong little rare earth magnets, so they hold on hold on there pretty well unless you flail it around like I just did. <laughs> okay, so that is the charging base. It charges via micro USB, so you can just plug this into you know, your computer or any other adapter that you have. I did that the wrong way. The micro USB goes into the charging base, and then this goes into your laptop or your car adapter or wall adapter, wherever else. Another really nice feature about this is that you can actually charge devices at the same time you're charging your flashlight. So if you only have one USB port or you know you don't have that many on your laptop or wherever else you're plugging this into, you don't have to use one up just for this. It actually gives you the ability to charge your phone or other USB device at the same time. So that's a really cool feature. So anyway, you plug this into the wall or, or laptop or wherever else, stick the light on there, the, uh, the little light comes on and you start charging. This piece right here is actually a little rubber piece that has sticky sides on both sides. And uh, what you can do is put it on the bottom and then stick this on your nightstand or wherever else you want to have it attached. So that's pretty cool. You got a little thing to help keep it in place. You can always have a nice little charge light there by your bedside or, you know, by your back door or wherever else you want to have this uh, ready to go. And again, all of these come with the same stuff. So they all come with the lanyard and the charging base and all that kind of stuff. So let's set those to the side and we'll show you the lights side by side talk about the interface and all that kind of stuff. See if we can get all the various accessories out of the way. And we'll take a little bit closer look at these guys. Okay, so all three of these have the Cree XML2 LED down in there. So same LED, you're gonna notice the same head size. 
and they actually make accessories for these. So if you want to use a diffuser or a filter or anything like that, or a traffic cone, they actually make all kinds of little accessories for these. And since they are the same head size, they uh, all the stuff works on all the different models. So that's a pretty cool feature that you have. Nice sturdy pocket clips on these, deep carry pocket clips. So you can see it comes up pretty much to the top of the light. On the S10, it's reversible, so you can take and flip it around. You know, this way you have it, you can have it attached to the brim of a hat. A lot of people like to have it where the tail cap is down, like my, or the tail cap is up, like myself personally. So I'll take and flip that around. Totally a personal preference. You can do it on the S15R and the S20R. It doesn't work quite as well because you can see where the clip is positioned on the three different ones. So uh, it works a lot better on the S10R if you flip it around. The other two sort of works. The uh, clip positioning is kind of awkward. Just turn them around, show you the different parts. Take a little bit closer look at that LED. So there's that Cree XML2 LED down in the S10R. There's the tail cap. And they also changed some internals. We get a lot of people asking if you can just get these tail caps and put it on your old S10. You cannot. There's also some internal changes as well. So just keep that in mind. All three of these come with a lithium ion battery. So not only do you have the light and the charging base, you actually also have the included battery. So there's nothing else you have to get unless you want to get any of those optional accessories. You have everything you need to keep the lights powered and charged. So that's a really cool feature. So you've got a 16340 in the S10R. It can also be powered by a CR123 if you want to do that. Obviously, that's not rechargeable. The S15R comes with a 14500 lithium ion battery. It can also be charged by alkaline or nickel metal hydride uh, AA size batteries. Uh, I, obviously, neither of those is going to be rechargeable either. And then the S20R comes with an 18650 lithium ion battery, and it can also be powered by two CR123s uh, if you want to use CR123s in an emergency or long-term storage or anything like that. So the charging base is meant for lithium ion batteries. Don't try to charge nickel metal hydrides or anything like that. It's definitely meant only for lithium ion batteries. Okay, so let's go ahead and set these other two to the, to the side now that you kind of get an idea of the difference in the size. And we use the S10R to talk about the interface. Another really nice improvement that they made, something that never really bothered me, but on the original S10 and then the subsequent one where it had the, the uh, blue plastic button, it kind of sticks out a little bit. Some people had act accidental activation in the pocket. I never really had that problem. There are a couple easy ways to get around it. One, if you just turn the pocket clip to right next to the switch, it helped prevent that. Also, you can turn it to over the switch to help prevent that, or just loosen the tail cap a little bit, and it would keep the light from activating. I never had that problem. We did have some customers that had it. So to address that, what they did is they actually recessed the switch around this little metal bezel. So you can kind of see, see if we can get a little bit closer look at that, that uh, you've got this metal ring that goes around the switch. That's actually not part of the switch. So the switch itself, you can see when you click it, is nice and recessed. So it's a lot harder to do the accidental activation. Like if you put your thumb and forefinger around it and squeeze, it's not just going to turn it on like it would on the older lights. You actually have to purposely press that switch, which is nice to help prevent a lot of those accidental activations that people were talking about. Same interface that you had on the previous baton lights. So a really cool interface that gave you access to both the lowest output and the highest output from off. So you have a moonlight mode, which is that lumen or half lumen, depending on the model, where if you press and hold from off, it'll go right into that. Super low output, crazy long run times, great for low light, up close kind of stuff. So if you don't want to disturb your significant other, or I like to use it when I'm looking in on my toddler at night, you know, real low light situations, it's a perfect amount of light. You know, stuff that's up close to you, it works really well for that. And then when you need them, you have the higher output. So you just press and hold, and it'll cycle through your different outputs, and you just let go when you see the one that you want. You also have a strobe built in there, so when you have the light turned on, double click and it'll go into strobe. And then you also have access to the max output from off. And you do have a mode memory, so you should turn it off, turn it back on, there's gonna be a mode memory. You can see it just keeps on going into that moonlight mode. But if we have it turned off, double click, it goes right to that max output. So from off, you have access to either your memorized mode or the lowest output and the highest output, and you can quickly access the other outputs and strobe as well. Fantastic interface on this. They did a really good job in designing it. Uh, it works really well in pretty much every situation. So you can see that nice sturdy pocket clip. You can turn it whatever orientation you want. You know, if you want to have it next to the switch or over the switch or opposite the switch, you can put it wherever you want. And it holds on the body nice and tight. And you got that, you can see the deep carry that it has on there. 
pretty cool styling on this. You know, Olight doesn't have to make their lights look good. A lot of flashlight companies don't. <laughs> it doesn't really help performance or anything like that. But for something that you're going to be carrying every day, you got to look at every day, why not have it look cool? So Olight does a really good job in the styling of their lights. They have nice little touches, like they put the blue O-rings. That's the same color as their logo and everything on uh, on the on the inside the bezel. So it's a pretty cool touch that they do. Not to mention the square knurling and just overall good looks. You have a low battery indicator built into the switch of all three of these. So when uh, the battery starts getting low, you'll actually have that low battery indicator come on as a little LED that glows. Let's take a look at all these side by side again, just so you can see what they look like. So you got the S10R, S15R, we'll kind of line the bezels up. You see them side by side, get an idea of the size difference. Even when you bumped up, up to the S20R, it's not that big. It's actually pretty comfortable to carry in the pocket. I mean, you can look at this compared to uh, a lot of the other lights on the market. And even some AA lights, single AA lights are this size. So it's not a bad size at all. It fits really comfortably in the pocket. Still nice and lightweight, slim size. Works out really, really well. But there are the three uh, side by side. So you've got the S10R, S15R, and S20R. Let me show you the uh, charging feature a little bit better real quick. So I had an Olight H25 headlamp sitting right next to me, and it has USB out charging, which is a pretty cool feature. So I figured I'd use that to show you the uh, the charging on these little guys. So I've got the S10R, and I've got the charging base plugged in. We're going to go ahead and turn the battery pack on and uh, just stick it on there. You can see it holds it on there pretty well. And then you'll see the red light turn on. That means it's charging, and then it'll be green when it's done. And it holds it on there pretty well. And you got the rubber feet that help hold it in place, and it pops off still easily and uh, you can use that other rubber one to hold it in place or the little rubber pad to hold it in place if you want you can see all these lights take the same charging base make sure the tail caps are tightened on and uh, they all get it going so it's kind of nice if you want to get all these different models or have a bunch of them you don't have to worry about using a specific charging base you can use the same charging base for all these different models so that's a pretty nice feature that it has so there you go, that's the features and the interface and everything of these new rechargeable lights from Olight. We're gonna go ahead and take all three of these outside and we'll show you how they do outside. All right, we're outside with the three Olights. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try out that mag light, show you what it can do first. This is pretty much everybody's familiar with what one of these guys can do. So there's a little bush or a tree about 15 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. So that should give you a good baseline. Let's start out with the S10. Tiny little guy, 400 lumens on max output. So you can see serious amount of light for this little guy. Definitely a spread out beam. It's not gonna give you any crazy distances. You know, you're not gonna be lighting stuff up 500 meters away, but you can see it's still pretty impressive. Nice compact, tiny little light, putting out serious lumens, and you got a lot of versatility. So you got a lot of different outputs, but there it is on the max. Let me show you what the lower ones look like. So the lowest one, going to be great for up close kind of stuff and then you can just cycle through all the different other ones actually that's not the lowest one there's your lowest one so good for really up close kind of stuff stuff that you know within uh from your face to the ground <laughs> that kind of distance it's not going to go too much beyond that but then when you need it to you can crank it up to the other outputs so lots of versatility in this little guy same with the other ones so that's the s10 let me actually zoom in on the uh, dock house down there just so you can see what it looks like down there so pretty well lit up Tiny little light, 100 feet away, still lit up really well. All right, let's try out the S15 next. Oops, there we go. All right, S15 turned on, max output on that. I'm just going to show you the maxes on the other two since the lower outputs are all going to be pretty similar, same, similar performance and everything. We'll shine that around. You can see a little bit lower output, so 280 lumens versus the 400 lumens. I'll actually do them side by side just so you can see what they look like. So we got the... Uh, 400 on the S10 on the right, 280 on the left. So you can see the performance difference between the two models. All right, let's try out the S20. Show you what that guy can do. So there's the max output on that. A little bit higher output, a little bit more lumens. You can see the increase. I definitely think is worth it. You know, a lot of people don't like the additional size. I don't mind it too much, especially if it's something you're not going to be carrying in your pocket. Uh, but even still, I mean, you're still a really compact little guy, slides in your pocket really easily. I like the S10 and I like the S20. Those are my two favorite models out of these. And uh, let's show you those S15, or the, sorry, the S10 and the S20 side by side. 
So S10 on the right, S20 on the left, kind of take them back and forth. You can see what that extra 150 lumens will get you. Not a massive increase, just like the 280 to 400 isn't going to be massive, but you can see there is definitely a difference. So if you want the longer run times, you want the increased output, S20 is definitely a nice light. All right, we got some more distance to work with. Let's try these out at a longer distance. Okay, we got some more distance to see what these O lights can do. Let's go ahead and try them out. We'll do the S10R first again. Do the double click, make sure it's on the max output. So that boat right there is about 15 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. Same ones we use in the long distance comparison videos. First one is at 50 yards. Second one to its left is at 100 yards. Tree line beyond is at 130 yards. You know, this isn't a massive thrower. It's a compact little light. Nice, really spread out beam. You're not going to get any crazy distances, but still, 50 yards is lit up really well. You can see the lighter parts of the 100 yards. Not bad at all for a single cell light. Nice, compact little light. They did an amazing job on these. I really, really like them. <laughs> You're going to hear a lot of positivity in this video because I genuinely really like these lights. They did a great, great job. You got the rechargeable nature of them, you got the included batteries, included charging base, cool interface. They made a lot of improvements over the originals, and the originals are still really nice lights. You know, a lot of people don't necessarily want the extra expense and the batteries and all that kind of stuff. So the originals are still great choices. They are going to keep on producing them, but these, I think they are definitely a worthy upgrade. So there you go. That's the S10R. Here's the S15R. It's hard operating a flashlight when you got like five other flashlights in your hands and controlling a camera and doing all that. So here's the S15R. I'm pretty sure I left a lot of the R's off of the model numbers in the first part of the outside video. So just uh, pretend I said R a lot more than I did. We'll shine that around. So we'll do the S15R there on the left, S10R on the right. You can see the difference in the 280 versus 400 lumens. Not a massive difference. You know, the ways our IC light, we're not going to see that as a huge, huge difference, but uh, there definitely is a difference. So that's the S15R. Let's go ahead and try out the S20R. Highest output of the three, 550 lumens. Going to give you the longest run times. And then here is the S10R as well. So S10R, S20R. Again, not a massive difference between the two, but there is going to be a little bit of a difference. All right, S10R, nice compact little light. You got the rechargeable feature. If you want the most compact one, S10R, definitely the one to go with. If you want to be able to use the more commonly found batteries like double A's, you know, your alkaline or nickel metal hydride batteries in an emergency, S15R is a good choice. You just get a little bit lower output. If you want the highest output, the best run times, S20R is your one. So they all have their place. They definitely all have their uses. I'd love it if you buy multiples of all three of them from me. <laughs> We're definitely going to keep a ton of these in stock because they are excellent, excellent little lights. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. So anyway, there you go. That is the Olight S10R, S15R, and S20R. If you like them, you can buy them from us at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or any of my guys at goinggear.com. And if you like the video, please subscribe. I do a lot of gear and flashlight videos. And that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll zoom in on the S20R since I never really did that. There you go. That zoomed in on the S20R. Okay, I'm done for real now.